I first so sorry for the rubbish quality, but I just could not be arsed putting the tripod up and everything. Um, so this is just my Mac on a washing basket. Okay, so I was in Sainsbury's the other day and I'd just been going through the checkout and I was about to put my card in and I realised someone else's card was still there. So I was like, alright, it's the guy in front of me. And he was this like doddery little old man that you get at Sainsbury's. So I went up to him and I was like, oh, this is your card back. And so I started chatting with him like while I was waiting for my friend to finish packing up all her shopping. He started talking about his legs, which isn't as creepy as it sounds, it did make sense. And then he somehow got onto the war, somehow. I think it was the army uniform. And basically him and his two brothers were in the Second World War. And his first brother was a RAF pilot who unfortunately died. And his second brother went to a post in northern Germany. So when he got called up because he was the youngest brother, he um, he asked if he could get put in Germany so he'd be with his brother, but he didn't. He got put instead into Hong Kong. So he went to Hong Kong, then he was in Singapore for a bit or something. He was just telling me like all these war stories that had happened to him, and while he was in Hong Kong once, he went out and bought like this really old school film camera. He said, oh, he never thought he'd be able to go back there. And there was a photography competition in like a magazine or something. So he started leafing through all the old photos he'd taken while he was in service on the war. And um, he found this one, he was telling me, it was like, uh, there's two men doing the hurdles, one black, one white, and so sort of as they were like leaping to hurdle, it looked like they were holding hands from like the way the photo was done. Turns out he won the competition, and um, the first prize was uh, a two week stay for him and a friend, or I guess his wife or whoever, um, to go back to Hong Kong, which is amazing. And then I got talking to him about photography because I quite like it and so I joined the photography society at uni and I told him that and when I mentioned the uni he said oh yeah I used to work for them turns out all the in our main building all the massive photos that are on the wall like of campus and everything were his and I was just like what the it was so cool and then it's not cool enough that he does photos for the camera he then started unbuttoning his little parka cheeky and said, and then brought out his camera. And he was basically saying like, oh, I, um, it, I, that, that was the camera he got from Hong Kong. Like all, I don't know, what, 50, 60 years ago, whatever, during the war. And he was just like, oh, I'd feel, like, I'd feel weird without it. And I was just like, that's so cool. That he just, just in case he ever like, finds something he wants to take a photo of, just always has his camera around him. It got me thinking how like, I could have easily just handed him the card and then just gone back to my friend. And then I would never have talked to him and found out all these amazing things. And, and it's like when you meet new people, they're just, they have so many interesting stories, especially older people because they've been through the war and that in itself just gives you a load of stories and they've lived an entire life so they have more stories to tell. Yeah, and it got me thinking about this quote, there are no strangers here, only friends you haven't met yet. And I was thinking it's such a brilliant quote because when you think about it, all the friends you've had in your life start off by being strangers. It's like, ooh, deep thought here. But you know, it's true, and it's like, I think it's amazing that you could go literally to Sainsbury's or like a coffee shop or anywhere, and just, if you just chat to a stranger, you can become friends with them easily. And I don't know, I thought, I, don't, I just thought it was really cool. And I think people should just start chatting to strangers more because, you know, that person in front of the line at you at Sainsbury's or opposite you on a train or next to you on the bus stop, you know, they could be amazing people with incredible stories. And just because you've not said hi to them or whatever, you wouldn't get to hear them. Or, you know, you might even find you have something in common with them. So I was on a train back from, I think, like, Sheffield to East Midlands Parkway or something. And we just suddenly started chatting. I can't remember why. I think she asked me the time or something. Like, something as little as that, you can just start a conversation with someone. Like, she wasn't in school or in uni. And instead, she'd gone, travelled all the way up to Edinburgh, where she only knew one person vaguely stayed with them for a bit and then now she's like got her own place and her job and she was just telling me about all these stories and then um and then somehow we got into music or something and that was just when Fall Out Boy had come back so I was like oh my god I love Fall Out Boy turned out she loved them as well but she hadn't heard the new album yet so I was like right got it all up on my laptop and then we were just like listening to the songs together still just like that little half an hour 40 minute conversation or something was really cool sort of feel like I made a friend in just that short amount of time or I could have just stayed listening to my music and just not really chatted with her. So I don't know, it's like you can get so many good experiences just from trying to chat to strangers. Well, that I found anyway. Obviously, I like, don't follow them down dark alleys or any shit like that. But sometimes it's better to actually talk 
to strangers and, and in sort of engage rather than just sort of stay in your own little bubble of listening to your headphones or just concerning yourself with your own business? 